Hey, welcome to the shop. Today I'm putting together a nice little modular fixturing package by making some clamps and stops that I can use with my new fixture plate. Now if you have a welding table or a fixture plate, whether it has threaded holes or 5 8 holes, I think you'll find some things that you can apply and adapt to your situation. Let's get started. So this is my new fixture plate, and while a big flat welding table is nice, if you're mo welding mostly small parts, a fixture like this can be really handy. I picked it up from Crummy Welding, and I opted for the uh, threaded holes. They also have a 5 8 hole version, but I like the threaded holes. So the, the first clamp kit I'm going to talk about is this one right here, and it's a milling clamp kit. And the reason I really like this threaded one is, is I've used a, a fixture plate like this on my mill before and it's pretty handy to just put together your own little fixture. So you can see you use these just as a little lever with that uh, stop on the back. You can get a ton of clamping force out of these. Um, they're, they're super handy. Another use for it is just to line it up right there and use another one of the bars as a stop. So you can get that in position right there. Now I wanted a few more handy uh, little stops, so I picked up some of these 5 8 shoulder bolts that have the half 13 thread that will thread in here and chucked them up into my uh, mini lathe to see if it was up for the job. So went ahead and spun this thing up to see if we couldn't, uh, couldn't cut it down. Now if you don't have a lathe, you could just cut this down um, with a grinder or use a drill to turn it while you're cutting it with a grinder because you don't need a precise diameter, you just need it to be smaller than that shoulder. And uh, I was surprised, you know, I got a pretty good result here uh, for, for the mini lathe, so um, not too bad. Anyway, you can take and just thread these in um, right into the holes. And I left the, the top exposed so you can still use an Allen wrench on uh, these pins to make some, some good little stops here. Now, if you use a combination of a number of them, you can see I have four right here that I'm threading into the plate. I can use those just as a reference on their own, so with those four, Right there, I have a perfect uh, right angle just going off of the index of the fixture plate. Now, if I move the one down, then all of a sudden I can uh, line things up at 45 degrees. And it's a, a pretty simple pretty simple arrangement just to use those. So, see I got everything in place and um, I should be pretty good to go. Now while I was at the hardware store picking up those uh, shoulder bolts, I picked up a variety of half 13 uh, fasteners and these can be handy for a number of things whether it's just bolting down a little piece of uh, material to weld up a little fixture um, can be nice but something as simple as just having these as some stops here on this little sheet metal job that I did not too long ago. This is a little mini fire pit I actually made a video about. Uh, there you can go ahead and just get everything lined up in place and having this nice flat reference surface and these two uh, two datums there defined with the the cap screws is really nice so for another kind of stop I picked up some of this uh, angle um, aluminum from online metals went ahead and cut a couple of pieces right off at six inches um, that I can go ahead and set up some uh, stops with so I cut two slots in these pieces of uh, angle aluminum just here with my mill. If you don't have a mill, you can just drill a hole at either end and connect them with a cutoff wheel. Works just fine. I've done plenty of that in the past. That'll work just fine. So I did that on the large face and then I just drilled a couple of holes here on the bottom that I can use to mount these in place. So I made the slots a little bit wide so that I'd have some flexibility here. So I go ahead and uh, screw them in with a few of these cap screws and then I have the option to move it around right and so the slots are long enough that I'm touching the next hole so I can pick some holes that will put me in range. Now I can use these holes to stand it up the tall way if I want a little bit higher vertical reference on it and uh, using these in combination right I have a little uh, reference surface there then I can slide this in place so that I make sure and have it uh, just right the separation that I want. And this will be really nice when I want to make multiple parts and you can use that vertical surface for additional material. Now, as far as holding stuff down, I went ahead and modified this Bessie clamp. Hey, let me interrupt just for a minute to introduce myself. If you haven't tuned in before, my name's Tim. I'm a welding engineer and I love to work in my side hustle shop and make these videos. So I have several videos coming up about TIG welding, stick welding, MIG welding, as well as some projects. So be sure to subscribe if you want to learn more. 
And after I uh, cut that Bessie clamp off there, I went ahead and pulled out some scrap plate and just cut a little uh, flange piece. And I'm using one of these diamond cutoff wheels, which, you know, it doesn't really cut as fast as the abrasive ones, so the jury's still out on that. But uh, anyway, got a piece out of it anyway, center punched it, and decided to drill a hole here. I figured I probably ought to use some, some sort of cutting fluid, so I got out the old tap magic to, to see how that does. And... Uh, you know, I think it uh, helped a bit. I'm getting a bit of smoke there. I think I'm running too fast, but I didn't want to fuss with the belts for the one hole. So we got through it with that Arbor Freight bit, and uh, I think we'll be fine. Anyway, I'll go ahead and take that little plate there and just weld it down to the bottom. And so I have everything clamped together square here and put a few tacks on. And uh, once I've got three tacks in place, it should be held uh, pretty well uh, in place. Now you notice I put it this way which doesn't give me as much reach but in fact it'll make it a little bit stronger because it's gonna to want to pull up on that bolt and push down behind so so I did that uh, on purpose there anyway I'll go ahead and just run a little bead here a few dabs and uh, should be good to go and I'm actually gonna use this clamp when I put together the next set of clamps that I'm building so these are some similar bar clamps that I picked up from Harbor Freight uh, right there that should work okay uh, they're a little softer, so I just used a bandsaw here to go ahead and cut the ends off of each of those and cleaned up a little bit uh, of uh, the paint on it. And then I picked up some uh, just regular cap screws um, as well as nuts that I can set inside there. So you can see how nice that other clamp is working just to hold even something simple right in place. So. I got everything lined up there and uh, went ahead, threw a couple of tacks on, and uh, after that I'm ready to just run a little, little bead and, and weld it right out. So anyway, I'm welding along here. You can see I'm starting to go a little bit of smoke. I cleaned off the zinc coating and the paint, but apparently I didn't go quite far enough. But uh, anyway, we got through it. So putting everything together here, um, I've got some of those pins in place, one of the stops, and you can see I'm just using some scrap material, but you can imagine if you were putting together a little short production run of, uh, you know, the smaller types of parts that I typically will make in my shop, I can go ahead and just use that bigger clamp, thread in some of these smaller bar clamps, have those references down on the bottom, um, and get everything cinched right in place and held up there, and I've got something nice and repeatable. I can make several parts and be confident that they're going to come out just how I want. Hey, well, thanks for tuning in today. You know, I think projects like this really pay off in the long run to take a little bit of time to put together some tools that will be useful. So hopefully you found some ideas that you can use in your shop, and we'll see you next time.